Welcome to Dajobnik, your command post for clarity and perspective. Good afternoon. I'm Israeli government spokesman Avi Hyman. This is day 124 of the October 7th war. Today marks four months since Hamas death squads invaded our borders and waged war on us. Four months since the second most deadly terror attack since 9-11. Four months since the worst attack on Jews since the Holocaust. Four months since the murder of 1,200 Israelis in cold blood. Four months since Hamas took 253 Israelis into Gaza, where 136 remain. As the news cycle races on, it's vital to keep things in context. We didn't start this war. We didn't want this war. But we will win this war. Morale is high, and our missions remain the same as day one. The destruction of Hamas, both its military and governance, and the release of every last hostage. We will continue on until total victory. As my Prime Minister told representatives of bereaved families yesterday, we are focused on one main thing, total victory. This victory is coming. Our heroes have not fallen in vain. We are on the way to total victory and we will not stop. An update on IDF fatalities. Since October 7th, 564 IDF soldiers have been killed. That number has unfortunately risen by two since yesterday's update. Major David Shakuri, age 30, from Rehovot. He, lives, he leaves behind a widow and 14-month-old baby. Staff Sergeant Hanan Drori reserves, age 26, from Psagot, is survived by his parents and three siblings. He was soon to be engaged. The IDF and all of the people of Israel share in, share in the unbearable grief of these families. We will continue to accompany them at this impossible time. May their memory be a blessing. Now for uh, an operational update from the IDF. In the last 24 hours in Khan Yunis, dozens of terrorists were killed by, par by paratroopers, the Israeli Air Force and Navy. As the IDF cuts through and dismantles Hamas's terror network, a substantial haul of intelligence materials have been uncovered. Documents available to view, uh, are available to view on the IDF website that show Iran's funding of Hamas as well as payments made to its leader, Yair Sinwar, who took enormous paychecks for himself. Huge piles of cash have also been uncovered. Hamas's fat cat leaders continue to prosper at the expense of their people. Documents uncovered by the, ADF, by the IDF evidence the transfer of $143 million from Iran to Hamas between the years of 2014 and 2020. This is, of course, no surprise, just further evidence of Iran's large-scale support of regional terrorism. On the diplomatic front, today we welcome Secretary of State Antony Blinken and his team back to Israel. Israelis remain incredibly grateful for the Biden administration's support for Israel, diplomatically at the UN, militarily with their, with their supply of defensive munitions and the strong deterrence against any other of Iran's proxies from further destabilizing our region. The Secretary of State met with the Prime Minister at his office in Jerusalem earlier today. And some good news. Yesterday, Israel welcomed Argentinian President Javier Millet to Jerusalem. President Millet announced his intention to move the Argentinian embassy to our nation's capital. This is not just a simple gesture. It's a historic reaffirmation of thousands of years of Jewish history in Zion. And we thank President Millet wholeheartedly. Okay, that's all for the updates for today. I'll now take your questions.
First question from Jody Cohen, World is One News in India. Does Israel have hope that a hostage release deal can be achieved following Hamas's reported counter-proposal? Jody, thank you very much for the question. Obviously, uh, from day one, Israel has had hope that uh, every hostage be released. We're looking forward to the release of 136 Israeli hostages who are being held um, contrary to uh, all the laws of uh, war and armed conflict. This is a war crime. It's a crime against humanity. And we call upon Hamas to release the hostages immediately. Now, uh, negotiations are ongoing. As you know, I've read the same reports that you've read. Uh, what I can say is uh, there is a historic precedent for when we last um, received hostages back to Israel. And that was our, Israel applied tremendous military pressure on Hamas. And that's what led to, uh, to, to an agreement. And I can tell you that uh, day in, hour by hour, the IDF is applying huge military pressure against Hamas, bringing them to their knees. And uh, we hope that they will soon um, acquiesce and release all 136 hostages. Next question from Leah Soroka at the Washington Post. According to reports, Hamas has proposed a ceasefire plan that would quiet the guns in Gaza for four and a half months, leading to an end to the war. In response to a proposal sent in early February by Qatari and Egyptian mediators and backed by the United States and Israel. What is the Israeli Prime Minister's office view of this proposal? So I can tell you that uh, we have received um, an update. We received a uh, notification from uh, the Qatari... Um, the, the Qatari negotiators, um, we are looking at them. The Mossad is looking uh, intently um, at what was presented to us. Um, I will reiterate the two missions of the war, which I just said have not changed. And those missions are to destroy Hamas, both militarily and their governance over Gaza, and to release all of the, all of the uh, hostages. Now, you know, I'm not going to pontificate and uh, and think about what, what the term ceasefire means. Uh, in the past, there was a, a, a short um, cessation of, uh, of hostilities to enable that release. There was actually a number of them uh, since October 7th. Um, but we're not looking, uh, we, 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 we are looking uh, at what was presented to us and we will update uh, when there is more information. Question from Melanie Lidman. Is there a response to the protesters blocking Keren Shalom? Uh, why have the police army not removed them? And is Israel concerned about the impact of the blockage during Blinken's visit when Blinken has made, an, ha, has made the increase of aid uh, a major goal of his visit? That's from Melanie Lidman at AP. So, Melanie, uh, great question. As you know, Israel is a vibrant democracy with uh, a range of opinions on everything. And uh, we welcome uh, protests. We welcome uh, Israelis voicing um, both sides of, of every argument. That, that, is, that is what makes us a vibrant democracy. Now, uh, within Israel, the, uh, the issue of aid is, uh, is one that many... Um, take issue with aid going into Gaza while they still hold 136 Israelis. Of course, we have a commitment um, to continue that aid going through. And uh, as, as the President of the United States has said uh, in the past, um, we hope that that aid is going through to the people that need it and not being stolen or commandeered by Hamas. Question from Henriette uh, Chakar from Reuters. What is the Prime Minister's response to reports from that Saudi Arabia is conditioning normalization on the establishment of an independent Palestinian state? So this is something that uh, comes up often. I don't have anything uh, specific uh, to, to reply to this. I've seen the reports that you've seen. What I can tell you is this is a question for the day after Hamas. What we're currently uh, focused on fully is the destruction of Hamas and the return of the 136 hostages from their captivity. The day after Hamas, um, Hamas will need to, uh, Gaza will need to be uh, demilitarized. It will need to be uh, de-radicalized. 
and it will need to be rebuilt. And we look forward to working with uh, our neighbors and uh, friends, old and new, in the region to rebuild Gaza um, for what will hopefully be uh, a much better future for our children and theirs. Question from David Isaac at JNS. Yesterday there was a report that the Prime Minister has asked for a re-examination of humanitarian aid to Gaza and the IDF was asked to present better alternatives for delivering aid. Can you confirm this? And what has brought about this change in thinking as he has defended aid until now? So I can't talk directly to uh, what I understand to my knowledge is uh, unconfirmed reports. What I can tell you is obviously uh, over the last few days it's no secret that uh, we've been looking very closely at the role of UNRWA um, and the Prime Minister himself has said that uh, the time has come to, uh, to replace UNRWA uh, if and when possible. Uh, we need a situation by which aid goes to those needing it and not to the Hamas war machine. Uh, no, no nation on earth would be, uh, would be asked to fund, the, to, 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 to um, fuel and fund and help the very people that are working towards their own destruction. So as Hamas continues to try and destroy our nation, our, our country, um, we want to make sure that uh, aid goes to the people that needs it. Um, now, that is the case in, uh, in war zones and, uh, and situations of natural disaster around the world. There are agencies, UN agencies and others, that deal with these problems. So the notion that there has to be one um, refugee agency for the Palestinian people and another agency for everyone else on earth is uh, a notion that we're uh, definitely looking into at the moment. Question from Mark Weiss, Khan English Radio. Where can the one million refugees in Rafah go if Israel attacks? Mark, it's an interesting question, but it's a hypothetical question. So uh, I, can't, uh, I can't comment on hypothetical questions. What I can say is consistent with what the IDF has done from day one, which is we have done something that, uh, to, to my knowledge, um, not many armies in the world have done in the history of warfare, which is uh, given warnings uh, before attacking uh, specific areas. We've gone uh, to delineate uh, very specific maps and mapping of, of areas that are safe zones and not safe zones, and uh, I'm sure that will follow in the event of, uh, uh, of moving forward uh, on Rafa. Question from Joel Pollock at Breitbart News. Does the discovery of large amounts of cash in the tunnels in Khan Yunis suggest that the IDF is closing in on Hamas leaders and that they're running away? It's a great question. Um, in short, Hamas is on the run. This is what we've been seeing in uh, recent days, and this is what we've been seeing for some time now. They are literally on the run. They have built their underground network of tunnels, bigger than the London Underground, uh, with the intent of escaping. Um, now, w it doesn't take a genius to know that if they left their money behind, they were, they were in a rush, because they, they need money to continue, to continue their operations. But it shows two things. It shows that uh, they are retreating and we are getting closer and closer to total victory, as the prime minister said, and we will move forward until total victory. So it shows that. And it also, of course, shows that uh, the tentacles of Iran are never far from Gaza and uh, that they are funding that terror. Last question from Jim Williams at Zenker Inter International News Service, Washington, D.C. Does Israel need uh, the U.S. aid money at this time to fight the war? I mean, I think I've already answered that in, uh, in questions before. We, we welcome uh, the support of our allies. We welcome this isn't, this isn't just uh, Israel's struggle. This is a, a struggle, as the prime minister said, from very early on. This is a struggle for Western civilization. Uh, the same ideology of uh, Iran and its proxies um, seeks the destruction of our country as it does their country. Um, in their words, first they will come for the, for the Saturday people and then they will come for the Sunday people. Uh, we know the slogan of the Houthis, etc. Um, so it's very clear to me that uh, we welcome uh, foreign aid from our allies. Um, it is an agreement and agreements um, that, that, that help both sides and we wholeheartedly appreciate uh, all of the support. 
I think that's all for today. Thank you very much for joining and uh, same time, same place tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajobnik signing off.